Good morning, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Um, we'll go ahead and open with a prayer. Dear God of glory, we come to you with grateful hearts for this Sabbath day. We thank you for the many blessings that you give us throughout our days, especially on the Sabbath day. We ask for the leading and guiding of the Holy Spirit to teach us, to help us to understand the intricacies of the creation of our, of our human brain. We give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> okay, so... In, in 2020, uh, Elder Parmender introduced us to the um, fast brain, slow brain thinking. And um, so I want to pick up on that and add some more uh, information and look into it um, a little more deeper from the psychological and um, structural part of it. And um, for clar clarifying, we do not have, uh, the fast brain, slow brain is not two sections of your brain divided. Like you can, you know, left brain, right brain. That's not what um, fast and slow brain thinking is. Um, it's actually two types of thinking. And so we, our brain has an overall uh, system throughout it. And those two types of thinking pull from the different areas within the brain. And we need both types for sure. We were um, made with that and they each have a specific role. But um, it, it's really important <clears throat> I think that we need to uh, understand a little bit more exactly how they work. And um, because um, our minds can mislead us. Um, we can have wrong ideas and wrong conclusions and yet think that we're actually right. So the way we think and how we think affects how we read, which affects how we believe. And so this is crucial in um, how we study the word of God. And this thinking is crucial to understanding God's word. So the, uh, and you know, the brain is our main tool um, that we use. And so it's, it would be good for us to understand how it works and how we can be aware of it. Now, um, a disclaimer, I am not an expert, but I did try to gather just enough information, not too little and not too much, but to try and strike a balance. So what I'd like to do first is screen share a quote to get us started. Um, okay, screen here. Okay. So I'd like you to read it and hear me read it, but then I'd like us to talk about it. Like, what does this quote mean? And this is written by a man who's a Nobel winner in. Um, Nobel Prize winner um, in economics and psychology. And this is what he has to say. The confidence people have in their beliefs is not a measure of the quality of evidence, but of the coherence of the story that the mind has managed to construct. 
what does that mean? How do you, how do you read this? How do you process this statement that he's saying? We can break it down. Um, what does the word confidence even mean? When everybody speak at once. Just because you think it is does not make it it does not mean it is, basically. It's the way I'm interpreting it. Yes, that's good. It sounds like there's a uh, a false confidence um, that there's this certainty that something is true, but it doesn't mean that the beliefs have evidence that there's quality of evidence beyond the confidence, the feeling of confidence. Mm -hmm. And I think that we can think about different experiences we've had where we feel probably maybe long ago in our early Christian walk or whatever, we had such strong confidence that we heard God's voice and he was telling us something, but we had no evidence. Even what about conspiracy theories? People were very strong and confident in their beliefs, but what quality of evidence do they have? And so the mind, what this man is saying though, is that it's not the quality of evidence and it's not the confidence, but it's the unity, the coherence of a story that the mind has managed to construct. So it has a gathering of information and it goes through, this is basically creating a shortcut to uh, understand and express their beliefs, even though they have no evidence. And this is where we can see um, conspiracy theories, traditions, even a thus saith the Lord, um, you know, the Bible says it, I believe it, and that's the only, but they're confident because it's, it's the word of God, but it only fits into a story that they have created. So keeping that in mind. Sure. Um, and see here, please. <laughs> okay, so this, um, our brain creates mental shortcuts. It helps to filter information, but it also, um, in creating those shortcuts also creates, uh, frequently results in cognitive errors, reasoning errors, thinking errors. So we wanna look closer to these two types of thinking, but specifically we're gonna focus on the fast brain. So understanding how the fast brain works is actually a key to improving our thinking and our decision-making. And um, later on, we'll see how a lot of way, how we make decisions without even realizing how we make those decisions. So we have this amazing ability to think without thinking. Not literally think without thinking, but we're thinking without thinking that we're thinking. So I'm gonna try that again. We're often thinking, but because we can't feel or notice this thinking, we're not aware that we're thinking. For example, how many have been on a road trip or driving to and from a location and you're talking to someone while you drive or you're just driving alone and listening to something on the radio and you arrive at your destination and you don't even remember going through certain parts of town or 
uh, passing certain landmarks that are normal on your trip. You're like, wow, I don't even remember passing that. We were on automatic pilot. So we, our body, our mind knew how to drive. We didn't have to think about, okay, now you need to put your foot on the brake. You need to turn the turn signal on. You need to keep two hands. You know, we didn't have any of that going on um, visibly or awareness wise, but it was happening. Just like when you walk down the street, you are, your body, your mind is making um, thousands of um, decisions regarding like you're walking down the street, you're chatting with a friend and you're not even thinking right foot, left foot, right foot, left, left foot, stay balanced. It's automatic, but it's still decisions that are being made in your mind. And so you walk without difficulty, you keep up a conversation, you notice your friends in a good mood, you, you see that car out of the corner of your eye. And this had absolutely required no effort. It was, it was, um, you didn't even feel anything happening. You just were in the experience of it at the time without even thinking, right? So I want to screen share a photo here. Oh, wait a minute, let me get to screen share to give an example of how your automatic thinking take a look without thinking you're automatically coming up with an idea of what's going on in this woman you're looking at her well what do you see what do, what do what first things came to your mind when you saw this person's photo Upset, mad, anger, shy. Anything else? She's yelling. <clears throat> Irate. Mm hmm. She and you've noticed she has brown hair. Her mouth is opened. She's getting ready to speak, or she's in the midst of speaking. She's got her. Eyes are tense. You can see the, the wrinkle between her eyes. So she's angry. So in a split second, your mind made an assessment of this person without, you know, having to sit down and take out a notepad and, and like write things down. We are doing this all the time. When we meet people, when we're in the store, when we're at work, at a doctor's office, our fast brain is assessing the environment and making those kinds of um, observations. So then, what do you see there after the photo? May have a problem. And did you like? automatically you knew the answer yep didn't yeah. have to think uh -uh. okay it's automatic it has it's already there in you without having to get out the pencil and paper what does that say what is what does that sentence say to you right we are able to understand the words it's talking about the sky there's a weird name, there's a weird color for the sky. And our brain is going, okay, yeah, I get it, but you know, it makes no sense. It's, you know, who who, who sees a green sky? Mm -hmm. So the the point that um, and and the thing is, these are just really small examples, but we have them throughout the day. Mm -hmm. Um without even being aware of that. Let me get back to where I'm supposed to be. Okay. So we have this intuitive, fast thinking brain and we need that, okay? It's, it's um, autonomous. It doesn't require our um, conscious um, 
instructions to the brain to say, okay, tell me what's going on here. Is this woman happy or sad? It just comes. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've, we've, just, we've grown up with learning how to assess our environments. And so um, it's fast, it's effortless, and it's simultaneous. Now, I'm going to put on the board a list of fast and slow. And I don't know if you can see it very well, but I will, um, uh, I will put this on the, the, take a picture of it and put it on the thread so you can see it closer. So we have one brain with two types of thinking. We have fast. It's without self-awareness. It, it can operate on its own. Um, and it's, it's busy computing and calculating things, you know, keeping our breathing going, the blood flowing, our heart beating, those kinds of things. Those are, those are decisions and that takes energy from, um, for the brain to do all these things. And um, so it's uh, fast, like a fraction of a second, it just happens. It's um, without self-awareness, meaning you, you're unconscious. It's effortless, it's automatic. It doesn't require, uh, you don't have to think hard about it. Um, it's without control. And this awareness, self-awareness and automatic, we have that saying that um, what you see is all there is. And so from that uh, principle, that thought is a lot of decisions are made very quickly. Mm -hmm. And the role of the fast brain is to assess the situation. It gives updates um, and it works simultaneously with other parts of your uh, decision-making process. It works behind the scenes. Um, uh, like when you have a um, an emergency situation and your brain, you know, smells smoke and you're in the theater and you're not going to say, well, let me sit here and think for a minute. What does that mean? Your, your brain's going to go run. Um, we commonly know that as the uh, fight or flight uh, thing that comes over us it kicks us into action uh, without you know because it has to save us it's it's actually to protect us so that we can make decisions um, in a timely fashion uh, and quickly and the fast thinking brain aspect of our system the system of thinking makes 98 percent of all our thinking wow so you can see how this, this type of thinking is huge, it's large. It's, it's like, I don't wanna, I don't wanna say, it, it's like the center of attention, but you can't, it, it's in this back behind the scenes, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Because you don't even realize a lot of the thinking that you're doing is automatic. You actually think you're thinking, but you're not. You're doing just automatic thinking. Mm. Now, Kathy? yes. I might have an analogy that maybe not, but something that came to mind when you were um, describing this, kind of like all of the, the programs of a computer that are running in the background, even though you might not mm -hmm. have something up on the screen, there's still processes that are functioning. Yes, yes, that was good. And you don't have to think about it. They're just doing it on their own. So the slow type of thinking is not automatic, right? So the fast is automatic. The, uh, it's with self-awareness, it's deliberate. It's conscious. It's like, you know, when you sit down to balance your checkbook, that is not automatic thinking. That is effort. You have to take effort. You have to have control. You have to focus, you know, get the numbers right. 
um, uh, the it there's controlled thinking. This is uh, slow brain is logical and and it's skeptical, and whereas the fast brain its role is to assess the situation. The role of the slow brain is seeking for new information or for missing information to uh, help make decisions. And it makes 2% of all our thinking. Hmm. So, you know, we have our day-to-day -day living um, with these two types of thinking and um, it does affect how we make, it affects our behavior, right? Mm -hmm. Because if we, we're, we're, we're sifting information and if we don't take in the whole and we make a decision on the part, we're gonna have problems later because we'll be making an error in our judgment. And, you know, and that can even be financial. It could be making decisions about your health. Uh, it can be relationships. Um, it affects all spheres uh, of our life. And certainly because who we are and where we are prophetically, you know this affects the way we study and the way we understand God's word. So we, we, it's crucial to understand not only for our personal life and for our relationships, but because of our ability to study and understand the present truth. And um, the, uh, there is, um, it is suggested that we make 35,000 decisions a day on average. And they differ, you know, in difficulty and importance. Um, some have even said that the senses, all five senses, are sending in 11 million pieces of information per second, which really does fit in with the computer analogy when you think about it, because that's a lot of information in a short period of time. So there's really a lot going on in our body to maintain this upright human being mm -hmm. live and breathe and walk and think and react and and uh, function in the uh, in the world and with others. So um, these things are hitting us on a daily basis, and um, just even you know getting out of the car, walking into a building, and then. Are you gonna take the elevator or are you gonna take the steps? I mean, it's just these really fast thinking. And when you start thinking about how you think and make these decisions, it's really interesting to, because I was, I've become more aware of this as I was studying and preparing for this. And um, it was really kind of neat. It, I mean, it's not like you, you can't, stop this because the fast brain is always on duty it is always on duty and the uh, slow brain is not and generally it's in sleep mode like the computer is <laughs> and you have to wake it up to go into that deliberate conscious decision making study mode to be able to understand um, on a deeper level as opposed to the automatic surface level. But what the, what the um, fast brain does, because it can do so many things automatically and autonomously without our awareness, is because it is to protect the type two brain. You know, you know it, it keeps us from getting our brain overloaded which even, you know, how many times do we see, we say, man, I am overloaded. I've got so much going on in my life, in my mind, and I've got so many things I need to do. We feel overwhelmed. 
-hmm. And, um, but the fast brain is actually protecting um, our brain so it wouldn't, so it doesn't crash. Oh, wow. And so it's, and that's its primary task is to protect us from having a, to prevent us from having a cognitive overload where our brain just really can't handle it and it shuts down. Mm. Now, when we have, we have automatic systems um, decisions that are made because you know, for the this maintaining of the human body. Nobody, you know, says, okay, breathe. Thankfully, we, we're not, it's not dependent upon us to remind ourselves to breathe. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that would be really mm -hmm. challenging. <laughs> um, so they, these automatic systems take care of the familiar tasks washing dishes, um, driving, um, you know, brushing your teeth. There's just, you know, auto autopilot. You just know how to do these things. These are known as habits. And when you repeat them, these, these uh, become regular and understood and, and simple habits. We just, you know, we just do it. And so um, by rapidly going through the information, this is um, uh, the fast brain sifting through information and making decisions on how much toothpaste to put on the toothbrush. And, and you don't even realize you're, you're doing these. You just automatically do it. You know, we lift our arms, we move our legs. We don't even think about it. They just move. And uh, things are prioritized. And the brain works really well. It likes patterns and it also likes shortcuts. Mm. So when there's something that the brain is not really familiar with, it'll start drawing on um, and, and it's got like, it's got a problem to solve and it's never had it before, but it'll start drawing on the information that you have already and it'll filter through it. So this word for shortcut used among psychology and scientists is called a heuristic. Mm -hmm. And it's just short for, I mean, it's Greek for shortcut. Mm -hmm. And so you have a problem that you haven't encountered before and you then, in your mind, you're looking for available information inside your brain. How can I solve this problem with the information I already have? And um, the, um, so then you review this information and then you connect it to a, your experiences. Do I have any experiences that can help me make, you know, solve this problem? And then from there, you, you, your mind builds a shortcut and, oh, and it equals, it's a, an example of trial by error. You make a decision by trial by error. And so the brain is, instead of going to system two and saying, okay, here's the problem. What do I need to know? Instead, the brain goes, hey, I got some information here. I've had an experience. This is what it is. Mm -hmm. And it could be right, but it also could be wrong. And we're more wrong than we realize or that we even want to admit. So, um, and the other thing, and what makes, well, actually what we are when we make those kind of things, we really are irrational human beings. And we don't, really want to um, accept that. Um, and irrational is just, you know, not logical. You haven't used reason. Um, mm -hmm. and, and we are irrational, even though we think we're not, but we keep making the same mistakes. We keep using the wrong methods to come to our decision-making. And then we also forget when we try to convince someone we forget that they're irrational too. 
And so the facts and things just don't work. They fall to the ground. But we're all, we're all so eager to share mm -hmm. what we know. And, um, and it could be right or wrong, and we don't even really understand that. So this is the... Um, this is really having to take a hard, strong look at our mental processing, our, like you would say, computer processing, how we arrive at our decisions. You, you can't turn off the fast brain. You can modify it. The fast brain is the one that, let's say, um, somebody's rude to you. And your fast brain wants to respond mm -hmm. with um, maybe not a kind word, but your, your, um, if you keep your mouth quiet, if you keep it shut long enough, that gives time for the system to thinking and it'll say, don't say that. Mm -hmm. So, but if you are impulsive and reflexive with your behavior, because that's what your mind is doing, um, you'll blurt it out. And then later you have to go and apologize. You feel bad about it. And so this is where what we think can affect our, our behavior, obviously. So um, keeping in mind that um we all struggle we i mean we're all in the same boat right um and this can help us to understand each other and and have uh, uh empathy with each other and knowing that okay we both have this fast brain thing going on and um and uh so it's nothing unique to anybody it it uh we were all built with it. And so this, um, this heuristic is a, like I described it in layman's term, but in the definition they, of Wikipedia, it's an approach to problem solving. We wanna get there quickly, mm -hmm. okay? Um, the fast brain does. And I'm sure you've heard people say, oh man, these school to profit classes are so long, just get to the point. Give me the answer, okay? That's the shortcut. Mm -hmm. you, you, you don't wanna go through the process because it requires effort and it can be painful to get the brain to wake up and to participate in that study. We generally wanna, you know, get to the point, you know, people can be in a conversation like, yeah, 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 I get it, what's your point? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's your fast brain. And um, it wants to speed up the process because it, it wants a satisfactory solution, but it doesn't wanna really take the time. It wants to get there quickly. So this, um, the shortcut is still needed for many parts of our living because it preserves mental energy, okay? So we have, um, we don't want to, uh, you know, say good side, bad side, you know, the fast brains are, you know, really a problem. It can be, but you, when you become aware of how your fast brain is in your life doing things, you can modify um, and by becoming aware. Now, um, there's another um, type of shortcut and it's based on the availability of information. And when you think about how, like when we read Spirit of Prophecy or we're reading the Bible, um, if we keep to the surface reading, um, we'll 
try and understand those passages by information that'll come to our mind like oh yeah I remember I think I know what that means I, I read something about that um, and it, it first springs up into your mind it's the first thing that pops into your mind and then we make that uh, first piece of popcorn of information the most significant and then we make a decision and so by thinking of related events or situations and they happened before now we say okay look this has happened three or four times it must be significant and now you have a greater belief that what you just read and what you just concluded is correct and um so we we overestimate we over uh we give too much credence to these things of likelihood and yeah that's happened before and um that must be all there is and so with that kind of fast brain thinking we are inevitable to be wrong and what that is called is cognitive bias and cognitive is um, your reasoning thinking process and um, so the dictionary Merriam Webster's and Webster's says cognitive cognition is the mental action or process of acquiring knowledge and understanding through thought, experience, and the senses. And so the side effect of these heuristics, these shortcuts, is that then we suffer from cognitive bias. And that, I have a whole list we'll look at in a few minutes. But it's a pattern where you deviate from the rationality of judgment. You um, inferences about people or situations can be drawn in an illogical fashion. And you don't even realize you're creating your own subjected social reality. Um, from your own perception of the input, which again, we can see on the news regarding conspiracy theories, the big lie, the COVID vaccine, um, all of those kind of things, QAnon, people are taking in information and they're processing it in an illogical way because there have been interviews of people asking them to explain their belief and they can't. Mm -hmm. They just know it. Mm -hmm. And so there they have confidence in their beliefs with, and, and thinking that that's a measure of the quality of evidence. And they don't have any evidence. Mm -hmm. They have a story that their mind created. Trump's the man. He's been cheated. There's a um, corruption. And therefore, we need to protest. Mm -hmm. And that's the story that they created and so when you look at that quote and start you can start seeing then the, the truth of that in the news uh, especially with conspiracy people but um but even in our own lives especially you know when we were conservatives and we had a lot of us the lords um we just said well the bible said it and i believe it and you know mm -hmm. that's enough for me and because we were we were doing the uh, fast brain shortcut and we were too uh, lazy to turn on the slow brain thinking to actually figure out if it was true or not. And so we, we got into a lot of uh, interesting beliefs and we were very strong in those beliefs. And um, I personally have even had to apologize to people for some of my strong beliefs that were not correct. Mm -hmm. but I was sure they were, and I stood by them. Mm -hmm. So you can see how 
without even the quality of good evidence, how strong a person will be and how difficult it is to change someone's belief, mm -hmm. which I find remarkable to me that since the midnight cry message, the restoration that we are going through is the restoration of our mind and our thinking. And you look at how hard it is to change someone's belief, think in your own life, what am I clinging to that I'm not letting go of, that I'm so convinced God showed me, or that this is what the Bible says, am I deceiving myself? Mm -hmm. And our minds will mislead us, and we will be convinced that we are right when in fact we're not because we haven't applied um, type two thinking, the slow thinking that digs for treasure and not just remain on the surface. Mm. So I have a um, how much time do I have left? You could go 45. Okay. Um, so we're making judgments and, and uh, assessing things all the time. And, um, but we have these biases that are so, um, uh, what's the word I want to say? Uh, tame. Like if you have someone that, let's say you're having a job, you're you're giving a job interview, and someone walks into the office, and um, your system one quickly makes unconscious judgments based on shortcuts, on the heuristics, on your thinking process. How do you approach? And this this then leads to your biases. And so if the person is similar to you whether it be race or sex, you know, gender, um, you instantly like him or her. That's the liking bias. You can see then where racism, sexism comes in. Um, the person wears glasses. So now you think the person is smart. That's stereotyping. And all of this goes really fast. Um, we assess things so quickly. Uh, and, and we don't even know we're doing it. It's just, and it arrives, those thoughts just arrive. So these, these, um, this thinking, these thoughts then are sent to the system two as suggestions. And then those system two, okay, it turns them into beliefs. And then your brain just loves consistency. And then it helps to lower our mental stress and our cognitive overload. And then you, you then combine, you've got your, your fast brain sending those to the brain, a slow brain, and then you base your final judgment on those two operating systems. And you were helped by the shortcut, but it was skewed, your judgment was skewed by your cognitive biases. And we do this all day long in all kinds of situations. So, yes? Was someone going to say something? Nope. Okay. So, recap. And then we're going to look at a list of different biases that we can um, consider. So much of your thought happens beyond your awareness. It's totally automatic. If I say elephant, it is impossible for you to not think of an elephant. It just happens. So your automatic, I mean, your type one thinking is automatic like your beating heart, it's hidden behind the scenes, like the back of your head, you can't see it. 
It's fast like a sports car. It's effortless like a casual stroll. And it's simultaneous like a juggler. So all of that is going on. And a lot of times we can't even recognize what our type one thinking has done until after the fact. Rarely while it's happening because it's just too fast. Your conscious awareness, your type two slow thinking needs time. And and to recognize it, um, but by the time you have already made a disgusted face or caught your balance or you noticed your mother is angry. So you, you, it needs time to, to do these things um, and to then uh, affect your behavior. So, Recognizing these characteristics in our type one thinking will help us to understand both how our minds work, but also how to improve our thinking and deciding. Because how we think affects how we read, which affects how we believe, which affects how we behave, mm -hmm. which affects our dist destiny. So it is, I think amazing how God has given us line upon line and methodology to help us to get out of our fast brain and into the slow brain when it comes to this message because it helps prevent mistakes and wrong beliefs. And um, he's, he's already set up all the bumper guards and all the you know guardrails mm -hmm. to keep us from coming to jumping to conclusions and making wrong application. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to screen share. I think I have this one. Um, yeah, I just found this really fascinating, and I could recognize how uh, I had made decisions in life based on these biases. I'm like, oh man. And um, this is, um, can you see it? List of cognitive biases? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, we're not gonna do a lot of detail. I can send you this list and you can then spend more time. Mm -hmm. um, but there's something they call it the fundamental attribution era error. And this is the tendency to overemphasize personality based explanations for behaviors observed in others. Mm. So it's, it's, interesting how like you can go to a convention and say there's three speakers and one speaker is really charismatic and just funny and it's interesting and yet what they're teaching is wrong but the audience will like that speaker better because it has a a liking bias i don't know if that's in here or not but um it, they make they make their audience feel good. And so then your brain takes a shortcut and says, yeah, I really like that guy and, and what he's teaching or what she's teaching. And um, it turns out they've got, you know, error in there. But you override that because you don't sit down and take time to say, okay, what exactly did they say um, before making your decision to embrace it and then go buy their $35 book? Mm -hmm. So there's the implicit, implicit bias, which includes the stereotype, um, tendency to attribute positive or negative qualities to a group of individuals. Sexism, racism, there we go. Uh, priming bias, there's a confirmation bias. Okay, we know this one. Tendency to search for or interpret information in a way that confirms one's preconceptions. And so we know that as the echo chamber. And um, 
you know, it could be your bubble that you live in, but you know, you, you QAnon people are still listening to people who believe in QAnon and then it spreads and that's just the confirmation bias. Um, there's an affinity bias. You tend to be favorable. the liking. Yes, the li I think that the was liking. the liking one. Yes. Um, affinity bias. You are favorable, uh, favorably biased towards people most like yourself. Um, Self-serving bias. You tend to claim more responsibility for successes than for failures. A belief bias, a tendency to evaluate the logical strength of an argument based on your current belief and your perceived plausibility of the statement's conclusion. So we, we have all of these happening in our life. Um, the framing bias, I don't know what that one is. Tendency to narrow the description of a situation in order to guide to a selected conclusion. Um, there was another list. I kind of liked it. It was more of a shorthand. Um, oh, no, I'm going to show you this chart. We won't look at it, but this shows you how. Um, wait a minute. Let me click this one. And if you go to Wikipedia, you can get a lot more detail. Okay, this is a cognitive bias chart, and it was made for a business seminar. And they applied all these biases that you can use in any sphere, but they used it for their business. And like, here's one called the anchoring effect. You rely too much on the initial piece of information offered when making decisions. And then in real life, you hear the, the people say, well, the first tests seem okay. Do we need to look anymore? Mm. Not even realizing when they made that statement, it was actually a bias because they took the first test. It worked. Let's go. We can make our decision. Do we need to do any more research? Mm -hmm. um, the availability heuristic, which we looked at overestimating the importance and likelihood of events given the greater availability of information. And then they say, well, I saw something very similar to this on LinkedIn. We need to take it serious. Again, here's a shortcut. Mm -hmm. And it's overestimating the importance. And then there's the bandwagon and the belief bias, the blind bias, and there's so many more but you can see how even businesses now are using this to help improve their business decisions. And we certainly can take the same thing, the anchoring effect. Well, I found a spirit of prophecy quote and it says, don't go to the doctor. Mm -hmm. I got it, I'm done. Conclusion made. And that's an anchoring effect. That's a, co a cognitive bias um, without, continuing on to search to see what else was said in the spirit of prophecy about going to a doctor and plus understanding methodology and dispensation and things like that. So you can see how it's, it's everywhere in our thinking. Um, and, it, and, and sometimes you just think we're, we're really making good decisions when we've actually just um, used a mental shortcut based on a cognitive bias without even realizing that we did. Um, let me see, where does this go? Um, and this one, whoops. I just think it's so amazing. This is a little quick one that shows cognitive bias in just short one-liners. It's all or nothing thinking. It's either black or white, it's either good or bad, right? Mm -hmm. And 
So we're thinking in extremes. Mental filtering. We select some details, but we ignore the rest. Think of these kinds of cognitive biases when you do your studies, when you're reading the Bible, or when you're reading Spirit of Prophecy, or when you're reading an article. How are you, you know, perceiving what you're reading? How are you thinking about it? Or which brain type of thinking are you using? Um, this, these are not just, um, you know, there's many time kinds of um, mental health issues that are affected by this kind of thinking also. You know, I never get it right. I'm, nobody likes me and you create these thoughts and then they become, affect your feelings, which then affects your body, your heart rate goes up and then it affects your behavior and you withdraw. So, I mean, there's this loop in your mind because we have a constant conversation going on in our brain. Um, to ourselves um, that these kind of things too, we can make, we can base our logic on emotions. Um, we, we label uh, people or things, we adopt judgmental words to describe ourselves or others. Um, so, I mean, there's, there's so much here, but I, I, my point is to help us to be aware of this, to become more conscious. Um, it's a, um, uh, I think it's fascinating that we have this and that we do have the ability to slow down. So when we do study, we can say, well, okay, I'm going to I want to know the context. I want to know the history here. What's going on? When was this written? What's the background information? You know, instead of just reading it straight and, you know, look, we're not supposed to buy bicycles anymore. So come on. Spirit of prophecy says so. And that's an extreme example. But um, this is this is God's way of um, restoring renewing our mind which is in uh, Paul wrote in Romans that you're renewed daily the renewing of your mind daily and so um, we know that from the very beginning in heaven it was mind on mind and so this and and knowing we're in an information war is um, crucial that we have our most valued uh, tool and weapon is our mind. And so to, um, we need to understand that mind and that brain and how it works. And so we can use it to our benefit and to the glory of God. Amen. So if anybody's got any comments or I'm sure y'all can relate to these kind of things. This is not anything unique to any one person. It's all of us. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. <laughs> which is good to know you're not, we're not alone in this kind of thinking. And, um, but, uh, and I'd like, I'm gonna continue in January and then focus more on our studies and um, more slow brain and, um, and how we study. Amen. Thank you, Kathy. This was very, um, very good to see the the different biases and the the reminder to slow ourselves down and think things through and see mm -hmm. if we're we are biasing our decisions and how can we. How can we understand those biases better so that we can make an honest decision? We can assess the situation um, as it truly is rather than what, you know, what we think it is. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And the, the, the thing is that we, you know, we can't, we can't turn it off, but we can modify it. Yeah. 
we can, you know, um, we can constrain it in certain areas. Um, but it does, I mean, I've even had interactions with people, one, one lady at where I work, um, I have to sit at a lunch table with my client, with other people. And this one woman is definitely uh, conspiracy minded. She's, you know, tr uh, Fox News, all that stuff. And she just makes these broad sweeping statements. And generally I would respond with, well, let me correct you with the truth. Oh. And uh, <laughs> instead I would just say, well, where did you get your facts? Mm -hmm. you know how did you come to that conclusion and she doesn't have an answer and she actually was an evidence to that very first quote her confidence in her beliefs was her measure mm -hmm. of the quality of her evidence and but she didn't have any evidence well mm -hmm. it's on the news you know I'm like yeah but what news and where do they get their facts you know what I mean she couldn't do it and, 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 you know, and I'd say, well, you know, that's a really broad sweeping statement. You, you know, you have to have something to um, back that up. And so it's, and then a lot of times she'll go on and on and I'll just say, well, you know, we're just simply going to have to disagree mm -hmm. and, and then I'll stop it from at that point. But anyway, it's been helping me to have those kind of conversations with people that I know have a an ingrained groove of um, belief patterns based on what I already, I mean, I already know because of what she has revealed. So she's got Fox News. So we know she's getting disinformation. And, uh, but I can see how her fast brain is working. And so it's helping me to be aware of my fast brain and how I want to slow down before I make an opinion or I make a statement um, so that I can more study um, and understand. So it's really neat. Um, Elder Parminder did these um, back in 2020, I think it's, might be September 2020, the fast brain, slow brain, dangers of cognitive bias, that kind of thing. Um, but uh, we'll pick up next month on some more um, brain thinking and, and how we study. Hey, Kathy. Yes. <clears throat> I just wanted to, I find it really intriguing. I know you, you um, mentioned, you know, how many, many decisions that our brain is making without us being aware of it all the time. And, and you alluded to being a, a, like a computer, you know, doing this and, and, and very much is because I don't know if everyone has this background or has any exposure, but when you when you get involved in computer programming, you realize that there are certain routines or things that they even call them routines. There's other names for them depending on what you're doing. That that you things are programmed to do something, and if you actually go into that routine and look at how it's all put together, it'll it'll let you know how it's coming to that conclusion. Mm. But um, so there there's subroutines. And different things that are called upon over again, like it just keeps looping back into certain things. And if you work, when you work with that, I mean, even people who've only just done stuff with like a simple Excel spreadsheet, mm -hmm. you know that you can have other information from other cells that are all being fed into one other cell that's computing and doing things and you hear garbage in, garbage out. You know, um, I've, I've had exposure in past years working with people who who um, were teams of people where, where they're coming up with, with computer uh, programs that are so large that one person can't even do the whole project. So you've got one person working on this part of it, one person working on that part, of it, and all has to come together. And then later on, once they actually get it working, and then you know somebody comes along and says, well, I want to tweak this one thing, and don't realize if they tweak this one thing, how the ripple effect, how it affects everything else in the program. And so it's just... To me, I'm just I'm just um, realizing how, how um, what you're talking about here, um, even with the biases and stuff. I mean, you, you can you can look at things with with a computer programming, 
how all the computer programs work and, and everything and, and help you have more of an understanding. That's all mm -hmm. really cool. Yes, it's amazing. I, I, I mean, we are marvelously made. Truly, we are. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, we, we got some hitches. <laughs> And uh, so it, you know, it's kind of fun. You know, I remember first joining the Adventist Church, and I knew a little bit about health, but it wasn't until I became an Adventist that I started learning more about how digestion works. I had no idea, mm -hmm. and it was fascinating. And I was like, "Wow, this is really neat." It's like I'm reading the owner's manual about my own body. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it's like we get a new car, we get a new computer, we get something, a new tool, uh, whatever. We read the owner's manual. We want to know how it operates. Mm -hmm. And yet I was so far behind in even understanding how my own body operates. And um, so I think the, you know, and the, the brain, of course, it's a huge field. And the, the new sciences and the technology that they're able to literally see where you make these decisions in the brain um, is like brought brain study into the so far advancing. Um, so, you know, we're just really touching the surface here, but we're purpose is to help our own selves because our how we think affects us and um, mentally inside or in outward behavior, but it is purposely for us to be able to study better, mm -hmm. to better understand what we are studying and to comprehend um, the principles and truths of the, um, of the present truth message. So um, it, it has a, a double blessing. Um, and, and even more so uh, to learn how to do this and to spend just whatever time we can. Um, even just, just focusing on that little saying that says, uh, what you see is all there is. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can make decisions in my mind and I'm like, wow, that was just based on what I saw. I didn't know what ha was happening behind it. And I made a mistake in my judgment or when I asked a person a question based on what I saw, if I had asked them first, I would not have made a wrong decision or a wrong assumption that they had failed to do their job because I only looked a certain way. I didn't talk to them for, I mean, it's just all those kind of things. And it really can, this is how we either, can offend someone or be offended mm -hmm. because of our fast thinking. Oh, yes. And so it has many levels. Um, I mean, even Elder Carmenter said it can help you understand the sin problem. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, this is a, a big deal because um, you can learn a lot of knowledge, but if you don't have the practice, mm -hmm. if it doesn't change you, your knowledge won't help you. It's dead letter, pretty much. So we really do have a big opportunity and big um, responsibility that, um, and opportunity is a good thing, right? It, you know, we, whatever level we can get a better understanding is more than we had before. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think it's, and it's wonderful. We can do it together and help each other, um, yeah. and share yeah. our experiences together and, 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 okay. and know that you're not alone. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm just going to say, thank you so much. This really is important. I didn't realize how much this really does affect how we, how we behave. <laughs> That's huge. It is right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I want to say thank you too and um, just it reminds me of um, a couple of uh, verses that I think of periodically um, in 2nd Peter for the first chapter 
16, it says, for we have not followed cunningly devised fables. Mm. And I think of that sometimes, especially when we're talking about, you know, um, conspiracy theories and stuff. Yeah. And and, uh, the other one that I didn't even realize was in the same chapter. It says, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. Mm hmm. Well, you know, and I keep thinking along those same lines, there's so many Bible verses that do point to, you know, how you understand and how you think. And even Jesus said, don't be deceived. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times I would think, oh, yeah, I don't want other people to deceive me. Well, I can deceive myself. Yeah, don't even need that. That's the greatest deception, right? Because who would suspect yourself, right? (laughs) So it, I mean, there's, when you look again at those verses, it takes on new meaning, the renewing of your mind daily, you know, the taking time to think daily instead of just, you know, you, you can't stop your automatic thinking, but you can modify and use it to your benefit and just be aware of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's so many other Bible verses that would certainly fit this uh, scenario for us. Mm. Anyway. And one thing to add to the modifying the brain pathways, modifying, um, you know, that, that trigger response of our fast brain, the more we modify our response, the easier and easier it becomes. That makes sense. So the more yeah. that we respond to a negative tri- um, trigger with okay deep breath first mm-hmm. and let me process what's being said will help um, modify that rapid response that like fire alarm bell going off in your head of oh no this was said this was said what do I do I need to respond back right. so you can just handle it a lot more rationally Yes. And I mean, that even connects with um, when we react to uh, statements or comments with our emotions, Mm -hmm. you know, and like all of a sudden you feel a certain way. And now that is a cognitive bias Mm -hmm. that will then either make you, you know, not like that person or, you know, you you have a, a response based on your emotions without And that's, you know, I keep going back to that quote, you know, that confidence, you know, in your beliefs. Well, how about confidence in your emotions? Well, we we know emotions are not based on facts. Mm -hmm. Um, So, I mean, it's like, it's just really, it opens up a lot of things when you, it's like when we woke up to inequality um, or we woke up to equality and saw inequality everywhere. And we had to start with our own life, how we each grew up in in, in, in an inequality environment without even maybe knowing it Um, consciously, but maybe subconsciously um, growing up in a sexist environment, um, parents that were racist, things like that, you know what I mean? And you just and so now that we're aware of it, you, you can see it more, you know, we can pick up on these discriminatory actions or words or behaviors, um, writings, whether it be covert or overt. So, I mean, it really is, it, I think it's exciting. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So, and we all have these experiences, you know what I mean? We can all connect to it on, on, on different levels with different experiences, but basically everybody's got those biases. It's just, we really never knew. We just thought that, well, this is the way I think and uh-huh. never occurred to me if it was wrong. <laughs> yep. Okay, anyone else? Okay, Uh, we'll go ahead and close with prayer.
Dear Lord, we want to give you praise and thanks for the amazing creation of the human body and how you have created our brains. Lord, we want to better understand how, how, our, how our brain works, how we think. We want to be more conscious and aware because we want to better know you. We want to understand you and to have a uh, experiential knowledge through the line upon line studies to be able to grasp these things in a knowledgeable and understandable way using our slow brain. And um, we ask for your strength and the Holy Spirit to help us to transition from the type one thinking when it comes time to study the word of God and to have our, our minds renewed in the truth as it is found in Jesus. We pray these things in his name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. So yeah. Happy Sabbath, everybody. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Love you guys. Love Have you. a good day. Love you. <laughs> that was good. Thanks for the study. Thank you. Sure. Thanks for sharing, everyone. Mm -hmm.